Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I just wanted to first of all say a huge thank you to everyone who's been watching my content and subscribing. The channel has hit now 1,000 subscribers, woo, which is very exciting. So thank you all and I'm just so glad that you're finding it useful. So today's video is going to be my approach on how to improve the weaker hand. So I got inspiration to do this video from one of the responses on my drumming survey. Uh, if you haven't already done that, be sure to check it out. I'll put a link in the description takes two minutes and basically it's just what are your drumming goals, what are your drumming weaknesses and what would you like to see in a YouTube video. Please fill that out, it's free, it's anonymous uh, and it really helps me uh, create content for you. So be sure to check that out. So having a weaker hand is a common problem I think amongst most drummers and you know it's pretty hard to get your hands exactly the same. So they'll never probably be exactly the same, however as you know the drummers we look up to have proven it's pretty possible to get them very very close. So there's a ton of factors that play into this, I think, but today I've broken this lesson down into five categories of which I think are some areas that you can start working on to improve your weaker hand. If there's any other categories that you know of, chuck it in the comments and I'd love to see them. So let's get into the five categories. This is just my take. I hope you find it useful. All right, so the first category is speed. Now speed is probably the most common category people think of when you think of having a weaker hand, you know, our dominant hand usually is able to play, you know, faster, and then our weaker hand is not able to keep up. Basically, my take for this is, okay, so first of all, you want to kind of gauge the difference, okay? So if you take your dominant hand, if you play single strokes, you can keep going up and up, tempo adding 5 or 10 BPM, and find your maximum speed, okay, and then write it down. Then do the same with the other hand, uh, find your maximum speed. You know, if they might be the same, then that's awesome for you. But most of the time there will be a difference there. So, you know, why is this a problem? Well, when we put our hands together, which means we can play twice as fast, if one hand is slower, then when you get to those higher tempo brackets, then your singles are gonna sound disjointed and da -da 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 real flammy. And so that's not what we want really. So for example, if your goal is 200 BPM, 16th notes playing single strokes. Then that requires you to be able to play at 100 BPM, 16th notes per hand or each hand. So you need to play with the right hand and the left hand at 100 BPM before you can put that together. So if your left hand, for example, if your right hand dominant, if your left hand can only play at 80 BPM, then your maximum speed is only going to be 160 BPM, right? So to improve this, I would basically have a goal tempo in mind and then work out, okay, well, what is the requirement per hand for this goal? And then break that down and find your speeds uh, with both hands and then increase the BPM slowly until you can hit that target, then put the hands together. All right, so category two is power. Now, I put this one in here because I think it might be one that comes up in you know topics of conversation about weaker hands. However, I think this one is probably uh, the least sort of common problem when it comes to having a weaker hand. You know, you don't often hear someone say, oh, I wish I could hit the drums harder with my opposite hand. You know, it's not, not really a common problem. However, there's definitely some elements of actual physical capacity when it comes to playing certain things. Uh, and this is largely to do with the technique or the execution of whatever stroke you're trying to do, which I'll cover in the next category. But uh, one thing that I found was when I was practicing my double strokes uh, using the snap or the throw catch technique, two for one, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I found that when uh, I was playing at even at a slower tempo, my left hand, because I'm left hand dominant, uh, learnt right handed drums, uh, but my left hand could snap with a lot more ease and, and it was actually a fair amount more powerful or louder than my right hand. So what I did for this was I just went nice and slow and I just practiced using some contractions of throwing down, snap, throwing down, snap, just like this. So 
So I think of it as kind of like doing, you know, reps or bench pressing for the hands, I guess. Uh, and, and this will kind of build your muscular power. Um, however, again, remember that there always has to be a musical goal in mind. You know, there's no point doing the strongest molar stroke you can do if there's not a musical situation or a song or whatever that you're going to actually use that in. So for this category, make sure you choose a technique or a stroke that has a musical function. Uh, where you actually want to use that thing and then work on that slowly working on the technique and the muscular power. Alrighty, coordination or technique or dexterity. I've kind of lumped these three together as a category because they're all quite a similar thing when it comes to hand technique. So basically you know, this is one of the areas that I think is quite underrated when it comes to the weaker hand. So, you know, growing up, we do a ton of activities uh, with our dominant hand, you know, such as opening a door, uh, playing sports, you know, throwing and catching, eating with a knife and fork, or writing, you know, you usually write with one hand. For those who are ambidextrous, you might not have these issues. But for the larger percentage of people who are one hand dominant, you know, there's a lot of small coordinational tasks that we're missing out on due to, you know, upbringing of all these activities. So when we play drums, you know, we often will have a bit more coordination with one hand. So how do we work on this is the next question. So let me give you an example. So if we pick a specific uh, coordinational task, and I mean like a technique, all right? So I'm gonna pick up-tempo jazz ride cymbal, right? So ding, 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 ding. So with my right hand, um, it looks like this. Now, if I perform it with my left hand at the same tempo, I can't quite play the same. So as you can see, it's not necessarily speed or power. However, my left hand would be able to play that technique, but a lot slower. So I guess you could count it. But it, the issue actually comes, in my opinion, from the technique. So for this, I would practice nice and slowly with the left hand playing at a tempo that I can perfectly execute this throw and catch technique. So it may be super slow, but we are going for immaculate, precise uh, execution of the technique here. Another example could be the molar stroke. People might think, oh, I'm not getting as much power with my left hand or my right hand. However, if you slow it down and have a look at the trajectory of the hand, you might be coming in at a weird sort of angle, which is then causing you to have a less powerful stroke. But again, the problem comes from the technique, not the actual power itself. So for that, you just play nice and slow strokes, really making sure that you can execute the molar stroke nice and precisely. So for technique, choose a technique that you can play well with your dominant hand and you find you have some difficulties with your non-dominant hand or your weaker hand, practice the technique really, really slow and you can use a mirror or even just look over at your other hand, whichever one it is, uh, that's better at the stroke and just copy and just try and imitate that technique really, really slow and then the muscle memory will seep in and you'll be good to go. All right, so category four is endurance. Now, endurance is an interesting one because in drumming, often our hands have different roles, so we don't always need the exact same amount of endurance for each hand. For example, if we we're playing a 16th note funk groove, you see our right hand is playing but our left hand is just doing a few ghost notes and, you know, an accent. Also, this would be flipped if you were left-handed or open-handed. So in this particular instance, we don't require to play left hand 16ths for the whole time. So that might not be a problem, however, when we play a groove like the traditional shuffle Both of our hands here are playing the same Now sure, the dynamically that might be a little bit different, you know, left hand you're kind of cracking out those rim shots And the right hand is probably a bit more ding da ding da ding da ding, a bit more consistent However, we are playing the same rhythm here so you might find if you play a five minute song, you know, if you're right hand dominant, your left hand might be getting a bit tired after a couple of minutes or vice versa. 
So here's an example of where endurance uh, could be an issue for a weaker hand. So in order to improve the endurance, I would first of all take the tempo down, see if you can play it now, you know, 30 BPM lower than the goal for five minutes. All right, and work on that. And once you can do that, then make it harder for yourself. So either increase the time you play for. So instead of five minutes, make it six minutes or, you know, five minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, or increase the BPM, so instead of 30 BPM less than the goal, increase that by 10, so now you're only 20 BPM less than the goal, and keep moving it up until you hit your goal tempo. Remember, you can always move up in increments of 1 or 2 BPM as well. Uh, you know, 10 BPM may be a bit, bit too big of a jump, so just increase it slowly in small amounts. So, the last category I've got for you today is consistency. So consistency is another factor that I think is quite underrated and it's usually to do with the sound you produce, right? So consistency of sound. So are you hitting the drum in the same spot? Are you hitting it with the same volume and the same technique? Uh, are you using the same articulation? All these kind of factors, right? So a good example of this would be the rim shot. So often our backbeat hand is a lot more consistent than the cymbals hand if the cymbals hand was to play rim shots, okay? But, you know, when we're playing drum solos and things like that, we want to use rim shots with both hands. So this might be an area we want to improve on. So, you know, you could definitely start by just playing rim shots, alternating stickings, you know, just playing some singles, and just trying to go for consistency. Or you could mix it up and make it a little bit more fun, in my opinion, by swapping the roles of your hands. So play an open-handed groove, or if you play open-handed, play a cross-handed groove, or you know, switch your other hand to a cymbal and the other hand to a snare. Things like that. Uh, for example... And this will really help you develop, uh, you know, the sort of uh, subtleties that the hands have that the other hands are good at, if that makes sense. So for this one, I recommend playing a groove, but flipping the rolls. You could also get, you know, an example from the New Breed book or any book that has a written groove or transcribe a groove and just try playing it left hand lead or right hand lead or swapping, you know. All these things are going to help you improve the overall consistency of sound for the other hand. So there's my approach and five categories to get you started on how to improve the weaker hand. So why is this important? Well, the more consistent both of our hands are and the more breadth of technique and sounds and everything that we can get out of our hands, the more musical ideas we can play, which ultimately is the goal, right? To be able to play more musical ideas in more situations. So I think it's a worthwhile thing to work on. Now you may have one area of these that is lacking, which in that case I would recommend you work on that. But in the end, each area will help each other. So, you know, the more you work on your technique, it'll increase your speed and your power. And the more you work on consistency, will increase your groove and timing and all these other factors that don't have to do with, you know, weaker hand as well. So I think it's some good stuff to work on and I hope that you find it useful. If you're not sure which category to work on or where to start, I'd recommend if you have a practice session or a rehearsal with a band or something like that, if you find that, you know, there's something that feels awkward or uncomfortable with the opposite hand or a weaker hand, write it down and then take it to the practice room and work on it. And I think that's a great place to start because that's actually something that you musically wanted to play in that moment and you found it difficult. So working on that will solve that problem. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or any um, queries, put a comment, uh, drop it down there and I'll get to each and every one of those. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks again for listening and subscribing. Uh, you know, 1,000 subscribers is awesome and I'm really, really inspired to make more content. If you uh, have the spare two minutes, fill out the drumming survey. It'll really help me shape the content so that, you know, 
you all can get more and more out of my videos because that's what I'm trying to do. So have a lovely day, a wonderful week, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.